Toyota, Australia's most enthusiastically misleading and deceptive automotive brand. They're going to imminently start to sell one of the world's worst EVs ever here. The epic but ridiculously, meaninglessly named BZ4X, as they say in America. Toyota hates EVs, of course. They really don't want to make one. And thus, they've done the absolute minimum required to deploy this, frankly, astonishing EV. Corners have, amusingly, been cut. The execution of BZ4X has been beyond crap from day one, when the wheels started falling off. Literally. The vehicle is 18 delightful months late. <laughs> so I am somewhat glad I did not breath hold awaiting its arrival. However tempting that seemed at the outset. They've just basically admitted the other day the BZ4X and its intermittently attached wheels is going to be the dog with fleas of depreciation disasters. At trade-in time, your BZ4X's retained value will be roughly that of a bridge in Dresden on the 15th of February, 1945. So that's, I don't know, ever so slightly hilarious. BZ4X. Oh, what a squealing. At least at trade-in time. I'm John Logan from AutoExpert.com.au, Newcastle Cheap, Australia only. Website, card. The BZ4X is 18 months late here because, dude, it's just not a priority for the big T, which is increasingly run by bean-counting assholes and... Marketing professionals. So much so that they couldn't even stop the frickin' wheels from falling off, literally, in 2022. The motoring media, of course, got down on its knees, opened its lips, and went into full Toyota flute-playing appeasement mode on this staggering, perception-bending, engineering defect. Toyota is, of course, the major automotive advertiser in most markets. So if you're a publisher, this is a tap of gold that you really cannot afford to have some renegade journalist turn off by using the truth. And motoring journalists, of course, know exactly how to play this particular game. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Cyber threats are very real and we are all exposed to them every day. But you absolutely do not have to be the next victim. You need countermeasures and that's what NordVPN does in the background. You don't need to understand it, you just need the protection. Data encryption, hidden IP address, everything locked down, nice and secure. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Grab the two-year plan at a massive discount plus four extra months free and an additional surprise gift. I don't know what it is. Let me know if you sign up. NordVPN.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. You subscribe, you download the app and you connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded and your online traffic is masked with NSA level encryption across as many as six of your devices. Nord is of course the fastest VPN on the planet and it costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Your location will be masked and this means you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score great deals on travel and accommodation which are not offered at home. That kind of thing happens all the time. 
Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. Boost your online security and enjoy that discount, plus those extra four months of free subscription time and that surprise gift. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Thanks very much to Nord for sponsoring this report. The problem of BZ4X and its intermittently attached wheels did not therefore get called out for what it was. An epic piece of emphatically shit design inspired by bean counter asshole corner cutting. Instead, it became a, quote, wheel separation issue. That's what Motor Trend called it over in America. They also described it as a terrible, quote, blow for Toyo to shitheads to, quote, suffer. And then they added, to finally have an EV to sell and have, well, the wheels come off before it is even out of the gate is just terrible luck. The Australian motoring press were, of course, just as bad slash forgiving. Overall, it was just a remarkable display of editorial apologist bullshit, even for motoring journalism. Rembrandt himself could scarcely have done a better job just touching things up. I would, however, argue that bad design is its simply not a matter of luck. And any suggestion that this, quote, blow that the company suffered is an example of luck, terrible or otherwise, it just implies, quite creatively, I'd suggest, that the automotive publisher's ultimate golden goose is in some way a victim in this shit show of basic engineering mismanagement. I don't see how a car maker could conceivably be a victim of its own bean counter driven crap design, nor how this fault could remain unacknowledged throughout the entire R&D process. Dude, on my world, keeping the freaking wheels on a car is something any decent car maker should be able to manage, repeatedly, by now. On wheel retention, there should be absolutely no doubt. Like, the fact that it is even a question is ridiculous. Like, if the battery fails on your first ever EV and you look after the customers, like, okay, all good, dude. This happened with the very first Nissan Leaf, like Generation 1. <laughs> Except for the look-after customers part, Nissan bent them right over emphatically. So that was kind of also a fail, but for different reasons. But this is not that, right? This is my point. It's not that. This is an established engineering thing that failed because of third-rate execution which was a product of crap cost-cutting because Toyota fundamentally doesn't give a shit about EVs and really only pays lip service to the concept of deploying one. Specifically, in this case, the holes in the wheels were inaccurate, as in they were drilled in the wrong freaking locations far enough out that it really, really mattered. Plus, the surface finish on the seats for the fasteners was just too rough. Both of these factors militated against operational wheel security and retention, specifically when heat cycled, like when you use the brakes and then they cool down again. There was too much friction in the seats, leading to insufficient clamping force when they were torqued, and the holes weren't where they should have been. This is basic engineering stuff. But the result, like, oops-a-daisy, the wheels just keep falling off. For fuck's sake. What terrible luck. Like, what a blow. Poor ass. This just screams, to me at least, oh, mate, she'll be right. The fix, if that's the right word for what they did, was to stop selling them for a time and then engineer a high tensile freaking band-aid in the form of a new set of bolts with floating seats, like 
cone-shaped glorified washers with sufficient wriggle room to overcome the shit wheel to hub hole alignment and the cheap ass high friction surface finish. Like, dude, why fix this kind of thing properly when you can just half ass it? This is the kind of defect that should never have happened. If you know anything about basic production engineering, this is a tacit admission that they don't give a fuck about the BZ4X. Let's just do it cheap. <laughs> if Cherry did this, like the Chinese car brand named after a frickin' stripper, there would be an editorial bloodbath. Why is Toyota given a free pass? I just, I've never understood that. So, against this side-splitting backdrop of amateur automotive engineering, Toyota Schittsville has essentially just announced that they know the BZ4X will be an epic shitbox of appalling depreciation, and they've come up with a novel new way to bend you over on this so that hopefully you will not feel a thing. Not precisely in those words, of course. We know from our research that some customers are still a little unsure about electric vehicles and whether they will be suitable for their lifestyle needs. By offering a comprehensive lease that covers vehicle running costs, bar the recharging, with no upfront payments, we are giving customers a hassle-free option that alleviates anxieties they might have about stepping into a battery electric vehicle. Toyota Schittsville's astonishingly creative Vice President of Sales and Marketing, Sean Hanley there, saying all of that to the lapdog Australian motoring media with a completely straight face. Dude, imagine that. This means to me that Toyota will graciously allow you to pay that electric shitbox's grandiose depreciation incrementally in instalments every month so that you'll never quite feel the knife going in the way you would typically at trade-in time. Your entrails, make no mistake, are still going to end up on the floor, just not in that dramatic Kill Bill way. Car makers seem only ever motivated to do this kind of thing when they are absolutely certain beyond reasonable doubt that the depreciation will be off the frickin' chart. Usually they make these bold claims about offering you guaranteed future value and certainty. That's where they buy it back at some agreed price in the future, subject to you not driving it to the friggin' moon and back or using the car as a pen in which to breed your prized ferrets or something. This type of guarantee is always, like always, subject to you using their extortionate in-house finance. This is so that they ensure that you're still going to pay for the horrendous depreciation, albeit monthly, instead of in a lump sum right at the very end. This is that, but with a novel twist, being that Toyota Schittsville is always going to own the car. Not you, not even a little bit. Presumably so that they can yank it back from you without warning if any more of their third-rate engineering comes to light. That could be... I don't know, kind of handy. It's probably there in the fine print that nobody ever reads. Toyota Finance is, of course, remaining 100% Sergeant Schultz on what those repayments might be. They claim that this is because repayments will vary depending on how much of a fiscal scumbag you are, I'm paraphrasing, and how close to Centrelink you actually live. Still paraphrasing, dude. Like, they couldn't possibly provide a average or ballpark figure, could they? Exercising their common law right to silence in this way could not possibly be because that would allow, well, I don't know, how would you characterise a person of this nature? Some freaking outspoken geriatric asshole YouTuber broadcasting from his garage without once asking for a slice of those scumbags ad revenue pie might allow somebody like that, hypothetically, to 
decompile the payments and see exactly how quickly Toyota thinks the BZ4X will incinerate cash while you drive it down the road. Or, more likely, while you wait endlessly recharging on empty tarmac littered with broken glass and used frangers in the boonies. Saving that planet like, dude, so damn glamorous. Living the EV life. Watching someone else incinerate their money is, of course, quite entertaining. Doing it yourself? Not so much. All we know is it's going to be a three-year term of orgasmic EV-owning hilarity for you, dude. During which time Toyota will own the car and all you need do is charge it and worry about the wheels remaining on. Only approved and independently certified Muppets are going to be afforded access to this remarkable Toyota lease deal. Rejected, uncertified Muppets will have to buy their own nonsense-named BZ4X using money, the old-fashioned way, between about 70 and 80,000 bucks of it, depending on which variant of wheel retention bingo you prefer to play. If you do prove to be that certified and approved Muppet, a proper planet-saving Kermit or Miss Piggy, who's just gagging to plug it in every night, and check the talk on the wheel nuts, don't stress. You can hand your BZ4X back in just 36 short months, or you might retain your devalued electric nightmare conveyance using a fresh, somewhat less extortionate lease from Bend Over and Brace Finance, Proprietary Limited. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome is a thing, dude. There's no shame. Perhaps Toyota Shitsville in this case is just channeling its inner Netflix, hoping to show you the same bad battery-powered B-grade horror movie every night for a fee for the next three years. Golly gee, Jim Bob, that is one hell of a deal. Where do I sign?